What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. We're going to continue with our HTML tutorial for beginners. And in this video, we're going to be talking about block and inline elements. As we've been progressing throughout these videos, you might have noticed that some elements pretty much take up the full width of the browser or the content area that it's in. And some content or some HTML tags stay within the same line itself. Like it doesn't break to a new line. That's because HTML has block level elements and inline level elements. I have an article here or a tutorial here on my website. I'll leave a link to it in the description area. You can definitely check that out. But let's actually play with some code and see how this works. Real quick, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe. That way you'll be part of our community and hit the notification icon. So that way, whenever I create a new video, you'll be notified. Okay, let's go to our text editor. And we're going to be using the same file that we did before, the formatting.html from the previous video. So basically, every HTML element has a default display depending on the type of element that it is. We have the block level and inline level elements. A block level element always starts on a new line and takes up the full width of the available area or the container that it's in. So for instance, the paragraph tag, that is a block level element, whereas the small tag here, that's an inline level element. It doesn't force anything onto a new line. We also have block level elements like our block quote, that was a block level element, our h1 tags, the header tag, which we covered over here in the HTML5 tag specific video, the header tag, that's a block level. The div tag is also a block level element. The nav tag is block level. The anchor or the link tag is an inline element itself. The section is a block level element. Article is a block level. Main is a block level. And we'll go more in depth in terms of our unordered list and our list items. But by default, they're block level elements as well. Our side is also a block level element. Our footer is a block level element. Besides that, let's go over here. I showed you before the div tag, which is a block level. But we could also have a span tag. And the span tag is an inline level element. Let me cut this here. Let me save that. Now, why would you do this? Now, let's say you want to do something different with this line here. Maybe some specific styling. Maybe you want to apply a different attribute or something for this particular line of text, but you don't want it to force a new line break. Well, you can have an inline level element like a span tag. And we could go here and inside of the opening span tag, let's say we wanted to style this differently. We can use the attribute style and we can say we want color to be blue. Let's save that. So now let's see if this line of text here is going to change. Go back to the browser. Let's go back to that file. Let's reload, scroll up. And now you see that our span tag with the style attribute, color and value being blue is taking effect and is not forcing a new line. So that's an inline level element versus our div tag right here is a block level element. Let's go back to our editor. We could also apply that style attribute to the div as well. And we can say background is going to be like a light gray. Let's save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload. And now we see that that div has a background of light gray. Now again, you typically wouldn't want to use too much inline CSS. You're going to want to have your CSS in an external style sheet, but we're going to go over CSS in a separate series. I just wanted to demonstrate this real quick for you. And now if you want to see some other tags and see how they relate in terms of whether they're block level or inline, I have some of them here on my website. Block level element examples are the paragraph tags, the heading tags, the article address, a side section, div, and all these right here. And then the inline, these are some example of inline elements as well. I'm going to update this page with even more examples, but this is just a brief overview of some of the inline and block level elements. When we get into CSS, I'll show you how you can play around with the block level elements and inline level elements and how you can customize it. But for now, 
This is what you need to know in terms of HTML for the block level and inline level elements. Pretty much just a recap, block level elements take up the full width of the container area and force a new line versus the inline level elements they don't force a new line break and they continue the flow of the content. All right, so that was a quick video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe, join the community, and hit the notification icon so whenever I release new videos, you'll be notified. In the next video, I wanna talk about the document file paths, the absolute and the relative URLs, and why it's important to know. So make sure to check out that video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.